elements of it that people will um, be familiar with, such as uh, a particular vocal or a lyric from a song that they might know and love, but it's going to be mixed up in a very uh, up-tempo, dancey way. Okay, so this is something very different. So, what particular are you interested in? What genre is your favorite? Hmm, well, this is a... Probably, you say you play a lot yeah. of different genres, most DJs yeah. stick to one genre. That's the like, thing. Mixing it all together, so what's your opinion? Yeah, that, that is a very tough question. <laughs> Probably the most difficult question I could ever be asked. Um, uh, I would say that, you know, after, after 18 years of DJing, the only thing that's really kept me uh, continuing to be hungry and compelled by this job, because yeah. it is a job at the end of the day. Is, is uh, I, I love so many different genres of music, so I, I, I really appreciate Deep House and you know the sort of uh, tropical paradise island beach house and this whole vibe. But then I could flip the script and do just as easily uh, an underground house night, a progressive house or tech house, and then flip the script again and do something like tonight, which is going to be uh, very dirty beats, very break beat and hip hop stuff. So I don't. I, I don't know if I can answer the question to be honest. It's like if, if you're if you're a filmmaker or a film buff being asked what is your favorite movie of all time, it kind of it's, it's easier to ask what is your favorite movie of a comedy genre or what is your favorite movie of a, of a drama genre. You know what I mean? It's just so tough. It's so tough. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so you're saying that you are the stages of all sorts of genres. I do. And that's why, like, at your parties, we hear so much variety. Yeah, I do. It, it, it completely so, depends so on the So how do you know what you want to say? Um, I think that anyone that knows me and knows me enough to want to book me, yes. uh, they understand that, that I'm um, flexible and, and, and that I can, you know, fill, fill whatever uh, genre that they want to, you know, promote that particular night. So, you know, for example, I'm doing a, a two-week residency upcoming on, in, on Phuket, in Thailand, and each night uh, is programmed differently. You know, so Monday night we'll be doing some tech house. Okay. Tuesday night it's going to be uh, commercial, you know, big room bangers. And, and I'm just as comfortable doing that. Okay. <clears throat> and what inspires you? Uh, let's see, I think uh, the number one thing that inspires me is the fact that I'm not sitting in an office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's almost like, like sitting at the office. Yeah, that, that pushes me almost more than anything else. I mean, I think the thing I love most about this job is the travel. The traveling is in my blood. It has been since I was a little kid. And this is uh, easily the best way that I can see in the world. Um, but the thing that keeps me really uh, compelled to do this is the fact that I, I can't do the 9 to 5. I've tried, I've held various positions at different companies, and it's not that I'm not good at it or that I can't excel, it's just that you know, something about it just, just squashes me. You know? just like, it doesn't work for you, basically. I think yeah, that's so common agree. with all creative people. They cannot do the 9 to 5 job. I feel the same. I cannot do a 9 to 5 job. I have to be yeah, bored, I mean, then, you know, I mean, I think we broke, then we bored. That was what I was saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. I mean, I mean, I, there's been times in my career when I was broke, mm. but I've been happy. You know, through through it all because I was doing something I love. And uh, um, the, you know, I mean, the other thing is like, I, I just feel like okay, if it was my, for example, my my uh, bar or my lounge, then yeah, I could I could I could be extra, I could have extra incentive to come in in the morning for the management meetings and you know, all that sort of thing. But that's because you own it. You know, it's, it's different. You care. 
Um, but I don't. I, I, I just can't. I can't help build someone else's dream. I can't, I can't put in my blood, sweat, and tears for someone else's dream. Um, so I think I'm just going to keep doing this until I get to that stage where I, where I can have my own place. And I, I, I ultimately, I would like to have my own bar, lounge. Okay, bar. so that's the goal. Ultimate goal is to have it's your own. It's one of them. Okay. Yeah. What are the other goals? Yeah. Um, I think for now, oh well, the other goal would be to franchise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so instead of one uh, bar, club, restaurant, you know, we'll have we'll have ten across, you know, ten countries. But I mean, this is this is a little bit more future. At the moment, I just want to continue uh, traveling. I want to continue on with, uh, with playing in different countries as often as possible. Um, I just I just signed on to do two full time residencies in Thailand and Bangkok. But for the first time in eight years, I'm actually going to be uh, dedicating to myself to one club, technically two clubs, but you know not playing everywhere, not the freelance thing. Does that mean that you're going to be living in Thailand for a while? Yeah, I shifted to Bangkok uh, a couple months ago. I, I had been living in India. Um, I mentioned earlier. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, for, for a few years, I was based in India, but uh, I've set up shop now in, in Bangkok, and in June we start two full-time residencies there. It's like a totally new thing for me. I, 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 haven't, I haven't like committed myself to, to something like this for almost a decade. Wow, you know, it's been this free life. I am excited. I'm, I'm excited and a little, a little nervous. You know, it's, it's a bit like a marriage. You, know, you crawl into bed with a, a full-time partner. <laughs> You don't get a chance to try them out first, so you don't know exactly, you're not sure how they're going to perform. So, so I'm taking it as like a day-by-day -day approach, but these, these two companies are, are the best in the business and uh, probably the most anticipated club openings in, in, uh, in Bangkok history. So you mentioned that you like traveling a lot. Okay. To where all have you traveled? Where all does your music take you? Uh, well, uh, pretty much... Uh, I've just about checked off most every country in Asia, um, and that, that's been a, a real goal for me in the past few years. Like Indi India was my base, for, as I mentioned, from when I came here in 2008, it uh, was my base for about five years, but it's like the perfect jump off to go to all these other cities in Asia. It's quite close. Um, and and these, this is an exciting playground, you know, because there's, there's, so many, uh, there's so many cities that are booming right now in Asia, the economy has outperformed all the other economies throughout the last decade. True, true. And I think that's probably accurate. You know, whether true. it's Europe or the US specifically, or uh, the Asian economy is booming. And it's projected to, uh, again, boom for the next decade. And, uh, so just, might as well make use of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, like, people ask me, like, why, why, why aren't you in New York if, you're, you know, if, you're, if you love New York so much? And, and that's where you're from. It's, so, yeah. it's where I'm from, and it's where I lived for about 15 years. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not a young kid anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm 40 something. <laughs> so I, I want to see the world. You know, so so it just it just made so much sense. I, I had a job opportunity here at the end of 2008 with ABC. Um, so that got me on and to this part of, of the world. And then from from here, I started to realize that you know, all of these other countries were a possibility. All these other Asian countries. And that, that's where I decided I had to focus on something. Right? I had to like somewhat, somewhat, you know, manage my focus so that I'm not all over the place. So yeah, if someone wants to send me to South America or someone wants to if I, if I break a bit to Iceland or whatever, you know, I'll, I'll go. But in terms of my my efforts and, and my focus and, and when I've had management, you know, you gotta, you gotta somewhat, you know, hone in on something. Otherwise, everything slips through your grasp. Tell me, how is South Asian uh, market different from like the Western market, like in terms of your audience? How, how are the differences? Um, like when you play for your South Asian market and the state, playing a party in New York, do you see any difference, or it's pretty much the same? I'm not sure. There's a whole lot of difference. I mean, well, in New York, for example, it became uh, quite. Quite boring for me, and that everyone just sat at their VIP tables and drank their bottles and would dance in their little groups. And we really lost that sense of community on the dance floor. Where, you know, back in the day, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, you'd have the stockbrokers and the models and the club kids and the hipsters, they'd all be on the same dance floor. And then that became compartmentalized with the whole idea of bottle service 
and sitting at your table and being being the king of that that side of the club. Uh, but I, I think I think in Asia, you know, they're following suit, unfortunately, with this whole model of um, uh, you know, buying bottles and you know, outdoing your guy, the neighbor who's sitting at the table next to you. you know, is your bottle of Magnum bigger? But I, I, I think generally, uh, it's, it's still more about if you're in the club. You're, you're part of that that group, you're part of that community. So you're going to see uh, more people mingling and uh, I, think, I think everyone joining in. So it's, it's, I think it, for me it's a bit more open and, and that translates into to being able to uh, be a bit more creative behind the decks. And that, is that one of the reasons why you choose to Asia? Yes. Well, I love I love everything Asian. I love I love Asian food. I love Asian women. I, I, I love. You know, I mean, I'll just be very clear uh, about that. I don't, I don't have that at all. I, no, I, I love. You know, it's it's particularly where I'm going in Thailand. You know, it's the, the cost of living is lower. Uh, the quality of living I find to be very high. Um, the, the clubs are world class. Uh, it's ultra modern, ultra clean cities. You know, um, Bangkok, and you can actually see the blue sky. You know, it's, uh, it's 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 just for me the perfect playground. You know, um, where I can again on you know Air Asia, I can be in one hour. I can be in whatever in Singapore, or you know, I can go to Hong Kong. I can go to Taiwan. I can go anywhere. And uh, and I know these clubs are going to be packed. Because the, the economy is booming, these kids, these kids have money and they want to spend it. And and uh, I don't want to listen to your music. <laughs> and, yeah, and quite frankly, the budgets for DJs are, are, are much better than I find in that region. Okay. You know, and, and, and being being uh, from New York, that's something that I can I can uh, market. You know, it becomes an asset. Whereas back back home, um, every other DJ is you know has an impressive resume. It's done like all these great parties for celebrities, and it's, it doesn't count as much. And it's much more about me and how you know, but your buddy's the promoter, so you're going to get a gig as opposed to hiring me. who has been around for a long time, I've done many more impressive things, but it doesn't count. You know what I mean? So, like, I found that by taking myself out of the door, I, I was able to work on a much higher playing field. You know, and it, to me, it was, very, it was a very logistical. Uh, strategy. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm already, like I said, 40 plus. I still love what I do. I, I still imagine I'm going to be doing it for quite some time. But how do I maximize that? And, uh, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking to maximize that time in economies and cities and countries that really appreciate the fact that I'm there, as opposed to being. Uh, medium-sized fashion and yeah. <laughs> So, um, before you mentioned that you have been living in Asia for a while, so how was your experience with Asia? Uh, um, like, and you've come back or bigger, I hear you often come back, so how yeah. do you find it over here? Uh, I just love it. I mean, there's a reason why I was here for, for almost five years. You know, it's, uh, I, initially, I came over for, for a full-time job, like I mentioned, uh, with ABC. That lasted about two years, and then uh, that was in Delhi. And then I was just doing freelance around around India for the last uh, three years, and I got to go to every every Indian city, every top tier city, every every uh, tier two city. Um, you know, it, it, is a, it is an incredible country. It's a country of contrasts. It's a country of uh, enormous talent. Um, I have been, I've been, you know, I don't, I don't mean to sound like cheesy, but I've been so inspired by all of my, uh, my Indian, my younger Indian colleagues who have an enormous amount of talent, an enormous amount of ambition, and you know, it's so good to see that they're finally getting the attention they deserve. Like whether it's sunburn or whether it's you know finally they're getting some tours internationally, or, you know they're getting exposure throughout Asia with some of these guys, and it's it's so well deserved um, because I would say that uh, you know the Indian talent holds its own against any other talent, and it inspired me. Like, because I'm seeing kids that are a lot younger, that you know their skill level is just amazing. You know, so it's, it's pushed, it's pushed me, it's pushed me to, to stay hungry, it's pushed me to 
to be my best every single time. Because they're killing it. They're killing it. Yeah. Um, and, and besides that, I, I love everything about India. I do. I just love this place. It's such a, such a beautiful place to be. I, my, some of my best friends uh, on this planet are here. You know, lifelong friends, soulmates. And I find that the, uh, the Indian people are very, uh, very kind. Uh, and they're very, you know, they're very compassionate, they're very kind, they're very real. And I find them to be authentic versus a lot of other places I've been. Yeah. I will. I will always come back here, and, and I'll always hold uh, India close to my heart, particularly Mumbai. <laughs> you have to say that. I'm Bombay Hot Radio. He has to say that. <laughs> I, I, love, I absolutely love him. Uh, lo yeah. We do not pay him to say that. Mind you, we no, 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 no. That was a, that was a free. I just, I just. Uh, no, I got my start here. I got my start here uh, in 2001. Um, I was doing uh, the, the, the Thursday night Olive that has become. Thing yeah, it's the thing now. So that, that yeah. started, you know, about 15 years ago. And, and that was, you know, it was an amazing beginning for me. And uh, I just, I, I've had a love affair with the city ever since. <laughs> and of course, Goa. Yeah. So, it was amazing talking to you. I just, before we wrap you up, I want you to tell... Wrap? Please don't yeah. tell me all. I want you to basically tell us what... Um, what's your motto in life and what message you have for inspiring DJs in the world? Let's see. Well, I, I, you know, listen, I've made, made a living, I've made a career off of dance, music, and uh, making people dance, right? So I, I honestly think that, like, for me anyway, and I know this doesn't hold true to everybody, people who are economically forced to, you know, basically go to the office, come home, take care of all the responsibilities. But for me, you know, life is, is, is literally like a big dance floor, you know, and I just think people, if they can, if they can either afford to, or they have the opportunities to, or they can follow their, you know, their dreams and their heart and do things that they love, then life becomes that dance floor. I just think you got to get on it, you got to stay on it, and the moment you feel like you've gotten off that dance floor, you know, that's when you know that you've maybe taken a bit of a wrong turn somewhere along the way, and you can sort of re-examine, like, okay, how do I get back on the so that, you know, I'm, I'm, so that, again, you know, dancing through my life, because literally, we're here and then we're gone, you know, we're, we're, we're literally turning like dust, and so it's like, it's like, what are you going to do with that time, man? You've got to make it count or something, you've got to keep moving, life is too short. That word, those are really inspiring words, and I think you're like the Shakespeare of the DJ. <laughs> the world's a stage, and you're saying the world's a Sure, sure, I'll drink to that. Yeah, we'll drink to that, <laughs> <laughs> right? Thank you so Cheers. much. Uh, you're very welcome. Listening to you. Bye. 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 Bye.